So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to take a look at flood simulation in RGIS Pro. So the newest version of an RGIS Pro has, uh, that is 3.3, has a very interesting feature called flood simulation. So now we're going to make an introduction tutorial to the flood simulation in RGIS Pro. And this uh, flood simulation is available in RGIS Pro 3.3 uh, version. So now let me explain about the flood simulation. So the flood simulation uses a shallow water equation within a defined area of interest to model how the water moves and, and accumulate in a scene. You can uh, create one or more flood simulation layer in a scene and run a scenario and review the visual results. You can adjust scenarios such as increasing the rainfall or blocking the waterway and see what impact it has on the result. So the definition of flood simulation scenario is stored in a simulation layer and it is listed in new category in the content pane. So a scene can be contained a multiple simulation layer but only one can be active at the time. A simulation layer can include the following. A defined area of interest, a rainfall rate through time uh, which can change over time, an analysis processing cell which can be adjusted to control the resolution of the scenario and the ground infiltration rate which can be set using either a raster or the flat uh, value across the entire area of interest. And you can set the water source points and water flow barriers and channels. The starting water level uh, which can be uh, set using a, a raster. So now let me get back to RGIS Pro. So now uh, you can able to see here I have a map over here and I need to convert this to a scene. So the difference between a map and the scene is that uh, the scene is uh, a scene has a, a 3D element to it. So now to create a local scene we have to navigate to this option here. The option called view here. We are going to click the view section here. And now you can able to visualize there is an option here that is to map convert to a 2D map. So we are going to click this option. So we are going to click this option here. So we are going to click this option called to local scene. So it is converting to a, a local scene. So it's loading the map 3D. So this is a study area where we're going to create our flood simulation. So basically it's going to create a 3D uh, map scene for this area. And uh, you can uh, see that uh, already there is a uh, layer called 3D layers. And uh, default elevation surfaces uh, you can able to see here in the content section here. The world elevation 3D, terrain 3D. So now the good thing is uh, you can uh, add a 3D map, 3D base map into the scene here. So for that we're going to navigate to this option map. And in that we're going to click this option base map. And uh, we're going to add our 3D, uh, the 3D uh, base map. So we're going to click this uh, base map, light gray canvas. So it's going to load the 3D uh, layer. So now it's loading the buildings here. So you can able to see. So now let me find a suitable spot here. So this is the area where we're going to simulate our flood simulation. So now we're going to change the color of this building here, the 3D buildings. We're going to click this option arrow, the buildings, and we're going to change the color. So let me add a yellow color to it. So it's going to load the color here. So now we can able to visualize. So now uh, to change the view for view of this map, we're going to click this option called first person navigation. So I'm going to use my uh, left click here and I uh, can change the view here in this way. You can able to see that and let me navigate to the study area here. So this particular option is kind of uh, angled view. Uh, you can uh, able to see that here. So now let me get back to the position here, to the study area. And now to zoom in and zoom out, we're going to click this option. And uh, you can zoom in and you can zoom out. So I'm interested in this portion of the area, which is closer to the, closer to the Manchester uh, ship canal. So once you have that, so we are ready to create a flood simulation. 
So the flood simulation option is available in the analysis tab. And uh, so now here you can able to visualize an option called simulation. So you're gonna click this down arrow button. So under the simulation, there is a different version of simulations. The first one is the default, add a simulation, a flood simulation layer with no water, uh, with no uh, preset water to the map. And the second one is a rainfall. So add a flood simulation layer with a heavy shower to the map. And the third one is a water source. So add a flood simulation layer with a water source in the center to the map. So now we're gonna start with the rainfall. So we're gonna click this option. So it is initializing the simulation environment. So in the below, you can able to be able to see that a new edit uh, pops up over here. It uh, tells you how uh, you want to essentially. Uh, it is used to create an area of interest uh, that uh, you want to consider. So now we're going to create an area of interest. So there is two different options available. So the first option is uh, specify a simulation area by clicking a center location and a distance from it. So it's going to create a circular uh, study area. And the second option that is uh, uh, oriented rectangle. So specify a simulation area by sketching a rectangle. So I'm going to click this option. So oriented rectangle. So now I'm going to create uh, study the area of interest here. Let me create a create area of interest. So to finish the sketch, you have to just double click. So you can able to see that I have created my area of interest uh, closer to Manchester Ship Canal. So let me make some change adjustment here for the view uh, of this uh, simulation. And first, uh, you can able to see the boundary of this uh, area of interest here that is indicated in this uh, rectangular yellow line here. And uh, let me confirm the edit. I'm going to click this option called Create Simulation Area. So now here, you can able to observe the rectangular area here. Let me change the color. So to change the color, we're going to navigate to this option called Simulations in the content section here. And in that, we're going to click our area of interest. So I'm going, to I'm going to change the color here. Let me add a red color to it. So now I have selected the red color. So you can able to see the study area here. So I'm going to zoom to the study area. And let me adjust the view here. I'm going to click this uh, first person navigation. And now I'm going to select this zoom extent. And now I'm going to drag here a little. And now here you can able to visualize the entire area of interest clearly. So the flood area here you can able to see uh, it provides us the water depth, area of interest, water source, drainage and barrier. And now navigate to the simulation option here. I'm going to click this simulation. So here you can able to set your duration of your simulation. So I'm going to set the duration of simulation to be around uh, three minutes. So the duration of the simulation will be around three minutes. And uh, the amount of rainfall uh, for now we, for this simulation, I'm going to say I said the amount of uh, rainfall to be around 300 uh, millimeter. So I have set this uh, a large number of rainfall amount uh, that is 300 uh, millimeter per hour. So in order to visualize the visual effect of the simulation and the duration is set to be around three minutes. And here you can able to visualize there is an evaporation option is also available. So, uh, so you can enter the amount of water that evaporates per hour here in this option. So now we're going to set as zero uh, millimeter. Leave it as the default. So when you run this for the first time, uh, you can uh, able to see there is an option called configure simulation. So we're going to pin this here. So we have set the duration to be around three minutes and the rainfall amount to be 300 millimeter per hour. So here in the configure simulation, there is an option called starting water level. So it basically it tells you that if you have a raster that gives you a depth of the water in the creek that is uh, in this canal here that uh, you are modeling, uh, you can actually enter enter that uh, over here in the starting water level. It will consider uh, that depth before as an initial condition for, for your uh, flood simulation. So the next option is the infiltration raster here. I'm going to uh, click this down arrow button here. 
So there is uh, many uh, options available. We have impervious surface, barren dry land, and uh, barren wetland, and up to vegetation uh, wet clay loom. So in this option, uh, you can actually import your interpretation uh, over right here in this option here. Like uh, you can define a different surfaces. Like uh, first one is a impervious surface. Like uh, uh, different types of uh, surfaces, such as the impervious surfaces. The impervious surface re refers to roads, and the dry sand and wet sand. And uh, you can able to see this option here, or the grass or the forest. Uh, it will, uh, you can define the infiltration per per hour over here in this option. So now we're gonna set to uh, impervious surface. So the impervious surface has an infiltration rate of uh, zero units per hour. There is zero millimeter per hour. And the next option is the maximum infiltration. So uh, for that, I'm also going to select uh, this particular option called impervious surface. So which is a zero uh, millimeter per hour of infiltration. And at last, we have this option called contain the water within uh, within the area of interest. So when this uh, box is checked, uh, you can uh, able to see the below. When checked, the water is not able to leave through the edges of the simulation area. So once you're done, you are uh, choosing your uh, starting water level and filtration rasters and the maximum filtration. And you can apply this. And now we're going to click this option here. So the other option that is available in this flood simulation is the channel. So here you can add an open channel element into the current uh, flood simulation layer. So now let me create a channel here. So I'm going to click this channel. So I'm going to draw a channel over here. So I've created a channel here. So you can also enter the diameter and the reference of this channel. So I'm going to leave it in the default uh, value here, the diameter and roughness. I'm going to click uh, apply. So the next set of option is the water source here. So to add a water source element into the current flood simulation layer. And last we have this option called barrier. So it adds a barrier element into the current flood simulation layer. So you can create a barrier for the study area. So you can apply this uh, option. Let me click this. So you can select the height and the width of this barrier. And similarly, you can uh, add your water source. So you have to set your duration and rate here. So now we're going to run our flood simulation uh, model for this particular uh, area of interest. We set the duration to be around uh, 3 minutes and the rainfall to be around 300 uh, millimeter per hour. And now to run this model, we're going to click this option called run. So it is capturing the elevation values. So the simulation has started here, you can able to see. So now here you can able to visualize our simulation has started. So basically once you've started your simulation, it's going to take some time and uh, analyze your digital elevation model, the default one. And after a while uh, you will uh, able to absorb. So you will be able to see the water. The water will shows up based on the elevation. And now well, let me add a darker uh, base map here. So navigate to the map section here. And in that, we're going to add our base map. So we're going to select this uh, particular uh, the street. Or I can select this dark uh, gray canvas. I'm going to select this one. So now the new base map has been added, the dark gray canvas. So now we can able to observe. So we have uh, loaded our uh, dark gray canvas here. So now we can able to uh, see the water showing up, uh, showing up based on the based on the elevation that uh, it has. So we can able to see the water uh, shows up in the different area of this uh, study region. So we have a very high rainfall. Uh, it's around 300 millimeter per hour. Soon uh, we're going to uh, end up uh, having water accumulated in many areas uh, and essentially connected to the Manchester Ship Canal. And now here the water uh, that is uh, this raster is being populated with the depth as the simulation is running. So now uh, we have run the model, uh, the current simulation, uh, it has run as around 41 seconds. So now we can able to view the 
the water uh, appears in the many part of this study area. So now let me zoom in to this uh, study area here. So you can able to see the water in the study area here. And now let me zoom out. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so you can uh, see the entire study area. And now we can able to visualize the study area. And now here you can able to see our uh, simulation has run for around 1 minute and 30 seconds. And this is the 90 seconds of my simulation with a rainfall of around 300 millimeter per hour. And this is the connection between the water. So you can able to see the path here. And if you have a digital elevation model that uh, you have modified, you can uh, copy and paste uh, the digital elevation model. So you can paste your model uh, in this section here, the ground here. So you can uncheck this uh, default uh, digital elevation model and you can add your uh, dim into this uh, here, the, the ground section here. And you can check this default digital elevation model here. So the flood simulation model has run for two minutes. And this particular uh, flood simulation is actually very interesting. And this flood simulation is actually a good indication of how the water flows over, over a surface. Actually uh, an excellent indication because you have a very rough infiltration and very rough uh, evaporation is was incorporated in this model. So this is our flood simulation model. So the current runtime is around 2 minutes and 59 seconds. So okay, uh, this is the 3 minutes uh, flood simulation. It's done and then uh, you end up with this uh, raster of depth. So in this video, I have shown you a new flood simulation tool in RGIS Pro and we have selected this specific study area and we have set a duration of rainfall to be around 300 mm per hour and run our flood simulation model. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like.